Uh, thank you. I appreciate the invitation. And what we're going to talk about today is a subject that uh, is not that well known, immunoexcitotoxicity. This is a culmination of work I've been doing probably for the last uh, 20 years. Um, hardly anyone is uh, aware of it, even in the field of clinical neurology, but in the neurosciences, it's a very intense, hot area of research. Basically, uh, I assume that at least you have some basic idea of excitotoxicity. That's why you're attending this lecture. But excitotoxicity is a process where the glutamate neurotransmission receptors are being overstimulated, and it produces a process of gradual destruction of the synaptic connections and the dendrites. It also results uh, in uh, eventual loss of the neuron if it's very intense. So what we're going to talk about is some of the things that excitotoxicity is associated with clinically. And as you see on this slide, it's associated with a great number of clinical disorders. Uh, beginning early in life, it has a major role to play in neurodegenerative disorders. That is uh, development of the brain, abnormal development of the brain, uh, things like Alzheimer's, uh, all the way up into Down syndrome, lysencephaly, uh, some of the major uh, abnormalities of brain development. Uh, then we see that there's uh, the common things that most of us are aware of, like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, ALS, Huntington's disease. What we find in all these neurodegenerative diseases, the common denominator is an elevation in excitotoxicity in the brain. What I've uh, learned since then is that, in fact, in all of these disorders, there's an immune component that's very important, and that's what we're going to talk about. But also, there's glutamate receptors throughout the entire body, not just in the brain and, and uh, spinal cord. Uh, you have glutamate receptors in the lungs, in the endothelial lining of blood vessels, in all major organs, reproductive organs, uh, the pancreas, the beta cells. Every organ in the body has glutamate receptors. So we see it's connected with sudden, uh, sudden cardiac death. That is when these glutamate receptors are overstimulated, particularly in the face of low magnesium, you'll develop sudden cardiac death. GI disorders, uh, lupus, autoimmune disorders that affect the brain and the nervous system, they're activating these, micro, these uh, uh, immune uh, and uh, glutamate receptors producing destruction of the nervous system, multiple sclerosis. Uh, atherosclerosis is playing a major role because it produces very high level uh, uh, inflammation in the wall of the blood vessel chronically, high free radical generation, lipid uh, peroxidation. Retinal disorders, like now we know that uh, glaucoma, the blindness is not caused by the pressure, it's caused by uh, excitotoxicity, uh, in particular immunoexcitotoxicity in the retina itself, endocrine disorders, diabetes, uh, and we found that in fact it's also associated with tumor growth. Stimulating glutamate receptors on tumors cause uh, rapid invasion of the tumor and metastasis, and studies have shown it plays a major role uh, in the prognosis of all cancers. <clears throat> Now, this was originally discovered by Dr. Uh, Lucas and Newhouse, who were uh, ophthalmology researchers. And they thought that glutamate would enhance the health of the retina because glutamate was a fuel for the brain and neurons. But what they found is when they fed this glutamate to mice, it destroyed all the retinal cells in the, uh, along the inner layer of the retina. Ten years later, Dr. John Olnian, a neuroscientist, repeated this and found out that it also destroyed some very important areas of the brain. At that time, we didn't even know there was such a thing as a glutamate receptor in the brain. Glutamate was not known or accepted as a uh, neurotransmitter. Uh, since that time, we've discovered that, in fact, it is not only a neurotransmitter, but is the most common and one of the most important. 90% of all transmission in the cortex of the brain is by glutamate. 50% of all neurotransmission in the brain is by glutamate, which puts it far ahead of things like serotonin, dopamine, uh, acetylcholine, norepinephrine. And we also find that 
the glutamate receptors are playing a major role in control of the other uh, receptors as well. One of the things he discovered is that immature animals are infinitely more sensitive to this excitotoxicity than mature animals, and that uh, uh, there's this period of hypersensitivity from intrauterine life through the first two or three years of life that gradually declines until you become an adult. Then, as you reach age 50 and above, the sensitivity begins to rise again. So you develop this hypersensitivity at the two extremes of life. We also notice, if you look at the same uh, schedule, the, the immune reaction in the brain early into uterine is also hypersensitive. And as you really uh, begin to enter uh, the older age group, immune hyperactivity begins to occur again. So there's this parallel increase in immune sensitivity and in uh, excitotoxicity at the same time. Now we know that if you feed uh, one of the forms of glutamate, oral glutamate, called monosodium glutamate of MSG to humans, they can develop very high blood levels, anywhere from 19-fold to as high as 50-fold elevations in blood glutamate. Now it was thought in previous times that it did not penetrate the brain because of the blood-brain barrier. But the studies have shown, in fact, it does penetrate, particularly if you keep blood elevated, uh, glutamate levels elevated. Also, the brain is intrinsically producing its own glutamate under pathological conditions. One of the common uh, ones that we all are associated with is hypoglycemia. Uh, we used to think that hypoglycemia of the brain that would produce destruction of the neurons was secondary to the fact the brain was not getting its nutrition. But then they discovered if you block glutamate receptors, you block most of the toxicity of hypoglycemia. So when you have a low uh, brain glucose level, it causes the brain to pour out its glutamate and you get very high brain glutamate levels. Now this is some, uh, the early study that Dr. Olney did, this is slices of the uh, hypothalamus, particularly in the area of the archaeate nucleus. And what it shows is that this is the normal looking hypothalamus in that area. Within about two or three hours, you get uh, widespread edema and beginning destruction of these neurons. Here, this is filled with activated microglia that's uh, continuing the process. And then here, you see almost all the neurons have been destroyed in that part of the brain. This is with a dose of glutamate that's equal to what human beings consume every day. 